Tauri is built on web technologies. But what if we want to go offline? Or at least partially offline? In this video, you'll learn the basics of persistence in Tauri. We'll be trying to store a bunch of settings like volume, theme, and initial time for this timer. Let's go. As you already know, Tauri is split between the native Rust backend and the WebView frontend. The frontend is safely packaged in Chromium or Safari, which allows it to render UI via HTML, but limits its access to native features. The backend, on the other hand, is free to do anything a regular native app could, although, at least for now, the backend has to be written in Rust. Luckily, even if we can't or don't want to write Rust code, Tauri comes with a lot of useful stuff already written and packaged into APIs and plugins. Some of the available APIs would be notifications, clipboard access, or even a full-on update manager. We are mostly interested in access to the file system to save some stuff, and yes, it is one of the available APIs. However, the API seems to be a bit more suited towards accessing and storing files rather than data or settings. We technically could use things like local storage straight from the frontend world, but then again, there are a few issues. The first is minor. Local storage has a limited size, but we are not trying to store a lot, just a bunch of settings. The second one is a bit tougher. Local storage does not guarantee that our data will not be removed if the system gets hungry for disk space, and that is bad. Luckily, we can use a plugin called Tauri Plugin Store. Tauri has a bunch of plugins that are available from the official repository, and while the documentation for them might be sometimes a bit scarce, you can always have a glance at the source code to figure them out. And if that sounds scary, let's have a look into how Tauri Plugin Store works together. Installation is fairly easy. All we need to do is add one line to Cargo Toml, install the JavaScript bindings through our package manager, add a single line into our Rust code, and we're ready. The plugin is built in Rust, but it is expected to be run mostly on the JavaScript side. Since recently it is possible to interact with it through Rust, but if your app is Rust heavy, you probably want something like Sled, SQLite through SQLX or CORM, or even a custom solution instead of relying on this plugin. When implementing a custom store, I recommend looking through the code for this plugin or the SQL one if you're stuck. It helped me when prototyping with SQLX and Tauri. Because it's supposed to be accessed on the JavaScript side and is written in Rust, we need to install it on both sides. The line in our main RS is just a way of setting up the plugin and it allows us to potentially give it some configs. In our case, we're fine with the defaults. The documentation then shows us a simple use case. It will be too simple for us, but let's have a look anyways. We import the store and create an instance, passing a file name for the store. This plugin is meant to be used mostly for storing things like settings, so the name makes sense, but feel free to change it if you plan on storing other stuff. We are going to store settings, so we're fine. It's a fairly simple key value store. You might think of a key value store as if it were a single TypeScript record with string typed keys and any typed values, or a single Python dictionary, or a hash map in other languages. You set a value for a particular key, then you access this key's value. There's a lot you can do with this style of a store, but if you intend to store more complex relational data, make sure you wouldn't prefer something like SQLite. Be wary of the fact that even though you technically can use generics with get to acquire results of a specific type, it's not really doing anything on the type checking side. It's just as if you would write as that type. Not great, as it breaks all of our meticulously planned models. You can do a narrowing check that throws an error or use Zod. Zod is a schema validation library. It converts an any to a specific type, and it's really easy to use. Trust me, if you know TypeScript, you know Zod. Just set up the type the same way you would do it in TypeScript, but using Zod instead, and run parse on it. Now you have a runtime type check, and your code is again any and as free. Another issue is that this store is not persistent unless you actually tell it to be. 
or more precisely it is, but only when the app gracefully closes, so no storage on crashes. To save it, we have to run store save. Okay, so now the biggest problem, get. It is not reactive. How can we use it in a React app or any other front-end framework? We could treat it as if it were a fetch. And it is a fairly good abstraction. Our first approach would be something like a simple use effect with a use state. But that would be painful for many reasons. One, we would have to write our own error handling and loading, which is always an adventure. Two, you would have to somehow manage storing and reactivity on our own. Yes, all of this can be done, but there are nicer and cleaner ways to do this. The first thing that comes into mind is React Query. It's a fantastic library made for this exact case. Almost. React Query is great at server-side states, states where there's a high chance of a connection error or a desync with the remote state. Both of these cases will almost certainly never happen in our application. Let's think about our problem once again. We have a local application state that we want to keep persisted. Maybe what we need is a client state library that we will then persist with our plugin. This is where Zustand comes along. If you heard about Redux, Zustand is Redux but nicer and simpler. If you haven't, Zustand is a client state management library which allows us to easily and efficiently keep client state in one place and immutably update it. Immutably means instead of ever changing a part of our state, we always replace the whole thing. It makes it easier to check if something actually changed, keep a history of changes and make sure that our app behaves consistently. Instead of worrying about how to keep and manage our state, we can use a library that's meant for this and just make sure that our state is correctly persisted. Keep in mind that the ideas in this video should work well with any kind of client state library and any kind of persistence tool. Be it Tori Plugin Store, Tori Plugin SQL, with SQLite, a custom Rust code, or even things like Capacitor Preferences API if you're not using Tauri. To understand Zustand, you need to understand use state, but as it is the first thing you learn in React, I'll assume you already know it. Zustand is a bit like use state, but instead of having multiple simple states separately in your components, you have a single giant state for the entire app. It sounds mad until you hear about a few tricks that will make it all manageable. In Zustand, we always keep our state in an object and each key value pair represents a separate piece of state. Setters are not generated for you like in use state. You can define them like you would any other piece of state and when you do, you get access to a set function that will allow you to reactively update any piece of state. This function gets the current value of the state through its first argument, so you get to update the state in a component even if the component doesn't know the value of the state. And as our settings are something that should be shared throughout the whole app, Zustand is a perfect tool for us. While there are middleware-based approaches, and I recommend digging through them if your app is more complex, we will just go with a dumb way of syncing between the front-end and our storage by adding more code to our setters. Also, that way it will be easier to go through the basic concepts and customize some things a bit more, but it is a trade-off. For each setter that we have, we'll make it persist the new value whenever it is updated. Then we need to make sure that our new values are loaded when the app starts. This is called hydration, or at least this is how the Zustand Persist middleware calls it. Keep in mind that while similar, it's not the same thing as the Next.js hydration. Because our store is asynchronous, we have to make sure that our app waits before we load the stored values. We'll create a tiny dummy piece of state called underscore hydrated and we'll make sure that the app is in loading state before this hydration is over. After we wrap our app with a loading screen in case hydration is slow, it isn't, 
The only question that's left is how do we use our store? When defining a Zustan store, we created a use store hook. Now all we have to do is use it. We provide a callback to our use store that takes what we need out of the state of the store. When accessing more than one Zustan state at the same time, we can provide this shallow equality function as the second argument. It makes sure that the component only re-renders when the state it accesses has changed. The rest is the same as in use state. Now you should be able to persist your app. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you would like to learn more about coding, Tauri, or maybe even Rust, subscribe. There are many more videos coming this month. Thanks for watching.